Hello and thanks for joining us here on your evening on Spectrum News One. I'm Catherine Chloe Cahoon. And I'm Marissa Jack. Happening live right now, the Pentagon is giving its second update of the day. Those who have suffered lack of respect and loss of freedoms merely because of the color of their skin. And a new report is giving us an idea of just how often officers are using force. Breaking news in Buffalo, firefighters battling a house fire make a grisly discovery. Brandon, what's the update? So as you mentioned under this bill, the arbitration is non-binding and ultimately the governing body would make the decision. How do you think that would impact relationships between parties if they're struggling to come to an agreement? It will dynamically alter their relationship. A new world record for longest hockey game and millions raised to fight cancer. How can people become more educated in the issues? Watch your show. <laughs> well, Three. thank you. <laughs> right. Many of our communities are set to experience some heavy rainfall throughout the weekend. Catherine, not the news folks want to hear for their weekend, but hey. That does it for another half hour of news here on Spectrum News. We'll be back after the break with your top stories and another check of the forecast. Stay with us. I'm Catherine Chloe Cahoon outside of Buffalo City Court where two officers pleaded not guilty to felony charges. Catherine Chloe Cahoon joins us now from Buffalo with the latest. Catherine. Well, at first when you hear about a program that's supposed to help kids stay safe, it sounds positive. Walking into Shea's 710 Theater, you'll do more than just get entertained. I'm Spectrum News reporter Catherine Chloe Cahoon at the Kirschmeyer Bike Shop, where two-time national champion calls home base. This is the moment people have been waiting for. Fans in the stadium. When the boat is complete, it will be more than 70 feet long. <laughs> My Little Lady, this popcorn flavor was created by a six-year-old girl with an entrepreneurial spirit. Nature is a mycologist lab. Sometimes you have to climb up and other times you have to duck under to find the mushrooms. The snow goes past my boots, even past my coat. I'll lift a boot out just to give you an idea. This is because of what's called sage, but the bottom line is please be careful. From waterfalls to farmers markets with beaches and surf. Who likes to go swimming and sunbathing? or even uh, doing some surfing. The Philippines, an archipelago with more than 7,000 islands, invites tourists. And now tourism funds are vital, says Mark Fredelman Gomez Gravillo. He is a national civil engineer for the Philippines, an advocate for the United Nations Asia Pacific Development Program, and a youth lead ambassador. The national roads, and bridges in the Philippines, which has been struck and wrought by super typhoons. Gravilio discusses that in this exclusive interview, as well as his country's concerns over its geopolitical relations. Right now, to be honest, uh, the Philippines is afraid of China. According to the ambassador, friction between the Philippines and China was relatively subdued in the wake of the worldwide coronavirus pandemic. But another storm was brewing. The December 2021 Super Typhoon Rai. Before it played out, the Philippines had lost about 400 lives. Hundreds of thousands had lost their homes and drinkable water was scarce. In September of 2022, as the country was recovering from Rai, Super Typhoon Noru made landfall, moving at a reported wind speed of 147 miles per hour. With so much destruction, the Philippines economy has taken a serious hit. One way to recover our economy is just focusing on the tourism aspect of the government to become competitive when it comes to economic strategies. The dilemma facing this nation is that damage from the super typhoons must be repaired. Repairs require funds, and funds are in short supply following these natural disasters. The potential for a rich source of income lies in the Spratly Islands. It's really part of the territory of the Philippines, even when you talk about the constitution. But China really wants that because they also want to invest more on coal. They claim their claim on part of these islands. 
because of the treaty that was allegedly claimed by their own ancestors. The ambassador goes on to explain his country's fear of China. Because of its large capacity, it comes to its military. So when it comes to its army, we're way behind that. Even the equipment we don't have. We could not fight back. The Chinese government already started their construction phase for structures and buildings for maybe a nuclear power plant in this partless island. So we could no longer do that because when we try to navigate or fly within their so-called territory, aerially speaking, they will even give threat to us to shut all of the airplanes or even the ship that will go within that territory of this partless island. Gravilio says that despite these challenges, his people take great pride in their country and pull together even when life's obstacles seem insurmountable. He ends our interview with this. I invite all of the other nationalities to come in the Philippines because it's a lot more fun in the Philippines. We quote, we quote that. A golf course by summer and a ski resort by winter. That describes Burncliff. The business is family run and every member plays a role, even the cat Wilson, who greets guests as they rent their skis and snowshoes. He's very gentle. He's very, he likes sleeping. He likes people a lot. And he really likes napping in this one spot. And you can mostly see him in the golf shop or the front office. Lindsay Eddy's grandfather started Burncliff in 1967 with a group of his friends. Now it is run by Lindsay, her parents, and her husband. It's a very unique property out here. It's just, you know, in Wyoming, the Rolling Hills of Wyoming County, it's different from other golf courses because we do have the lodging right on site. So once you get here, you really don't have to leave the property at all. You can eat, you know, golf, ski. Lindsay, her husband Brian, and three of their kids strapped on skis and showed us some of the trails at Burncliff. Even four-year-old Olivia came along for the adventure. It's like a winter paradise. We really offer everything here for people. The drive from Buffalo to Burncliff is less than 40 minutes, and as long as the snow sticks around, the resort provides trails for all levels of cross-country skiers and snowshoers. You know, skiing is kind of like a lifelong sport, and if you start young when the kids are young, they're going to pick it up year after year. Every trail at Burncliff leads to a different site like this frozen waterfall. Reporting in Wyoming County, Catherine Chloe Cahoon, Spectrum News.